your eyes. Hey, everybody. Get some goggles. Get some goggles. Welcome back, everybody. My next guest spent four years as President Obama's chief White House speechwriter and has written a new book called Grace, President Obama and 10 Days in the Battle for America. Please welcome Cody Keenan. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Now, uh, for those of there who do not know you, former White House speech writer, current Northwestern uh, University uh, professor. That's right. Go you, Northwestern. Go Cats. Kwai kum, kwai sun vera. Now, uh, sometimes you answer to uh, the nickname Hemingway. Yeah. No pressure for a writer. Yeah. Okay, uh, Papa, I'll bite. How did you get the nickname Hemingway? Well, here's the dirty little secret. Uh, in the White House, everybody just assumed it was because I have some heft to me. I, during the State of the Union address, I'd grow a big beard. Huge um, fan of bullfighting. Huge fan of bullfighting. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's because in 2014, we were on an official trip to France. And I was writing a speech for the president for the 70th anniversary of D-Day, mm -hmm. uh, which that's not really a speech you can screw up. You know, everybody knows the story of D-Day. You can't really mess up that story. But I busted my ass to make this the best speech anyone's ever given about D-Day. So the president comes back on the plane just as we're about to land in Paris, and he goes, this is great, man. I have no edits. And that immediately frees up a night in Paris. So I, I grabbed a bunch of staffers. And because we, we all loved each other. Like, we'd been together since 2007, and we just didn't get to hang out together often. So we had a big dinner in Paris. People start leaving to go back to the hotel. And a few of us are like, ah, we're in Paris. Let's go out. And four of us ended up staying out all night long. Uh, ben Rhodes, Terry Zuplat, and Ben Holzer and I. Uh, just going from bar to bar, jazz club to jazz club, watch the sun come up over the Seine. And uh, we show up back at the hotel at 6.30 in the morning as staff is showered, dressed, and ready to get into the motorcade. And, and Ben Rhodes is, is just shouting at this point, like, Viva les Americans! Viva la France! <laughs> and the deputy White House chief of staff comes over and she goes, uh, get upstairs, take a shower, get ready, and get back down here. We're leaving your asses in Paris. And we were like, well, don't threaten us with a good time. <laughs> but so we, we make it, we get on the plane, and somebody dimed us out to the president. He comes back on the plane, and he goes, oh, ho, ho, a movable feast is back. <laughs> and we're just kind of slouched in our chairs. And I think he was, he was just jealous because he can't do that anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, for eight years, you worked in the White House mastering uh, Obama's voice, his rhetorical style. What, what did you learn from him by writing for him? One of the more interesting lessons he taught me uh, actually involved jazz, which I wasn't expecting. Okay. This, was, this was 2015, and I'd been working on the State of the Union Address, which is a speech that every speechwriter wants to write, until you do, because it's awful, right? Like, it's a laundry list. It's a laundry list. Nobody, nobody really likes the State of the Union Address when you're watching it at home. But, um, so I was determined to try to make this one the best. And I gave it to him eight days out, which was a new record. And I'm just waiting for him to call me up to the office and tell me how good it is. You know? And that call doesn't come. And I'm just like waiting and freaking out. And a day later, his assistant calls up and says, hey, the boss wants to see you. And I'm like, this is it, you know, finally. And I go up there, and he's, he's having lunch in the private dining room. He goes, hey, brother, sit down. And I'm just waiting for him to get to me about the speech, and he goes, how you doing? I'm like, I'm fine. He's like, what'd you do over the holidays? I'm like, I wrote this speech. Like, is it good or not? And he goes, so here's the thing. This, this is the best shape we've ever been in eight days out. I'm like, great. And he goes, but we still have eight days so we can make it better. I'm like, okay. He goes, here's the thing. Everything is in here. And I go, yeah, I know. It's a State of the Union address. Everything is in here. And he goes, no, no, no. Everything's at a 10. Every sentence says something. Every word means something. I need some of it at four, seven, six. And I'm like, I'm like yeah, I kind of get what you're putting down. And he goes, let me put it another way. You ever listen to Miles Davis? And I'm like, well, like when my girlfriend comes over, yeah, I'll put Miles Davis on. <laughs> and he goes, and he goes, no, no, no. He goes, you know what they say about Miles Davis? I go, obviously not. He says, it's the notes you don't play. Mm -hmm. It's the silences. You guys get it. It's the silences. Yeah. He said, so I want you to go home tonight, pour yourself a drink, listen to Miles Davis, don't do any work, and come back here tomorrow and find me some silences. And that kind of stuck with me through, through speech writing and through life. Like, even now with a, with a brand new baby, I will carve out time and just, you know, my wife will be like, hey, find some silences. 
With a brand new baby, you find silences? <laughs> well, the, the new book is called Grace, President Obama and 10 Days in the Battle for America. After eight years in, in, the, in the White House and, and helping President Obama, why focus on those 10 days in June of 2015? There were so many extraordinary events packed into these 10 days. I remember somebody wrote that it was, it was too implausible for an entire season of the West Wing. And the, the 10 days were bookended by a racist massacre in Charleston in a black church carried out by a white supremacist. And the 10th day, Barack Obama went down to Charleston and sang Amazing Grace in the eulogy. Um, and in between, there were all these extraordinary events. Uh, the you know, Republican governors started bringing down the Confederate flag in the South because the, the murder had been carried out under that banner. The Supreme Court is, we know they're going to rule on Obamacare and marriage equality. We just don't know which way. So all these unanswered questions from our history are coming to the fore at the same time. You know, race, violence, bigotry, inequality, who matters? Like, what if the Supreme Court says gay people can't get married and they become a second class tier of citizens? What if they say, you know, the tens of millions of working Americans who just got health insurance, you can't have it anymore? What are we gonna do about that? So Barack Obama always described, I stole the thesis from him for the book, and he knows this. Um, in, his, in his speech in Selma, he said, you know, he described Selma, but it's also true of politics, that it's not a clash of armies, but a clash of wills. We're always engaged in this contest to determine the true meaning of America. And in that week, everything ended up going the right way. And it felt like we were winning that contest uh, for the first time in a while. And obviously these things don't hold forever. Progress is up and down, but but it was just an extraordinary story that, that needed to be told. And I want, you know, you mentioned I teach now, I want young people like my students to read this book. And I want it to do what other books did for me is convince people that politics is worthy of their time. And you can make a difference and it matters. And it can actually be fun and joyful, which we don't see a lot now, but it really can be. Um, and for everyone else, you know, who's grown cynical the last several years, I want this to be a broadside against that cynicism. I want to blow it up. And this book will make you believe again. Well, thank you for being here. Good to see you again. You. The book is Grace, President Obama and 10 Days in the Battle for America. It's available now. Go to Keenan, everybody.